Bitcoin was one rand in 2010 and today it is more than 500,000. So what you should do with this information, stick around and then I will give you more information. Otherwise, the SNL Academy. Today, I'm just going to dive in on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I think if you've been following us and if you have read our bio, we do tell you we are giving information or education on how to invest in the stock market, which is buying shares from companies that you know that you use. And also, we've told you we're going to give some education on cryptocurrencies and also in investing in properties. Now, what is nice? Of this you can get all of this in easy equities or at easy equities the platform that we are using to invest we've told you about the platform if you're still not sure about it we have videos that we have done about proving to you the legitimacy of the easy equities they've been around from 2014 they have a partnership with capital bank and the discovery bank so if you have a capital bank just go on your epic and check you will see easy equities so you cannot make such partnership if you are not a legit person or not doing a legit business yeah? so now very important information that i'm just gonna dive in using uh the information that i have gathered for you guys as we always tell you as beginner investors we are beginner investors our channel is for beginner investors and non investors not the OGs in investing we've been around for a long time but we are for people who are non investors who are saying i mean i've never invested in my life i fear investing or i don't know anything about investing yeah? so this is your channel we will grow together and we will learn together so one very important uh, information about Bitcoin is a decentralized cryptocurrency that was created in 2009. So it's been around for more than 10 years. Decentralized basically it means it is not controlled or owned by a group of persons or decisions are not made by just a single person or a group of people but it operates on a network of computers around the world. And also, if you have access to a computer, access to, a, to internet, then now you can be part of this family and we all have access to internet and we have our smartphones. Ne? So, done deal. Ne? Another very important information, it was created by a person or a group under a pseudonym. Pseudonym meaning it's a false name. I will get I will get on to the trying to explain why it's a pseudo name. And then this person they decided to give this person a name by Satoshi Nakamoto. It's a Japanese name by origin, actually. So now pseudo name it means it's a false name. The reason why these guys were creating something great. So they could not afford to, to have the, themselves being known by the government. Why? Because we know our government wants to control everything. So now with Bitcoin and it being decentralized, that means the government cannot control it, the wealthy people cannot control it, and also it gives power to everyone who have access to internet and a computer because they can participate in this big revolution and also one of the biggest invest inventions in our lifetime yeah? so now these people they have to keep it on the low and hide themselves because imagine if they had to be known we all know what the fbi would have done we all know what the cia and interpol would have done they would have been on this guy's case and the next thing we know it would have been suicide yeah? so so for them it was important to lay low yeah? another very important uh, information uh, this is my personal opinion I believe if our current financial system was not broken and it was fine there wouldn't have been people who created Bitcoin but because they could see loopholes on our financial system and 
how broken it was. Né? As it is, we are all complaining about interest rates. Né? We are all complaining about the fact that the cost of living is forever rising. We are also complaining about the fact that we have currencies in the world which, which are basically different countries and also they hold different values. Like for me, I'm a South African, so our currency is a rand. So our currency, it is less than the USD, it is less than the Euro, and it is less than a lot of currencies out there. The other very important thing about Bitcoin, since we are on currencies, Bitcoin does not change value when it crosses the border. That means if I have two Bitcoins and I have to move to the US, they still have the same value. It's unlike me having two million rands and go to the US. Now all of a sudden, I've lost my status of being a millionaire. I'm a thousandaire, you know. So with Bitcoin, value is intact. It's intact. It doesn't matter whether you go to Japan or you go to Russia or you go to Nigeria or you go to Kenya, anywhere you go, the value of your Bitcoin, it doesn't change. It stays the same. So who wouldn't want to have that kind of money, that hardcore money, that sound money? Ne? The other one is the reason why these people created this is to give power to the people. So now we are in control of our own money. We're not going to have like a South African Reserve Bank that is printing money and also tell us how much money in terms of the supply they're going to give us and they can increase the supply as the, year, the years goes by. When they increase the supply, it always have an effect of the value of our money that we are holding because we all know what they say about scarcity. The more scarce anything is, the more valuable it becomes. With Bitcoin, you have 21 million Bitcoin created maximum supply. No one can increase this as far as we are concerned. No one can increase this. So it's a maximum supply. But with the rand, with the dollar, with the euro, they are always printing, forever printing. Yeah. By the way, I'm still waiting for the South African Reserve Bank to tell me where I can get the machines to print the money. Because, you know, I do have connections in China. So if they can just tell me where I can get it, I will start, you know, speaking with my Chinese friends. And then I'm ready with a profit to print my own money, given the current interest rate and how we are really struggling. Yeah. Okay, back at it, you know? uh, Bitcoin, my friend, like I did tell you, it operates on the network of computers. You know? So now you'll get people who are going to say, what happens if there's no electricity all around the world? So now, if that is possible, I do believe a lot of things can be affected. So is Bitcoin. There are a lot of things that can be affected. We all remember what happened to Facebook when they went down for a few minutes. I'm not sure whether it was minutes or hours. They lost billions of rent. So obviously with the Bitcoin, it's going to be the same thing. Man. What I am trying to do, guys, is I'm not trying to tell you go buy Bitcoin, uh, try to invest in cryptocurrencies, but I'm just trying to show you another side that you will not get a lot of people telling you about it. Do not come into the crypto space or the Bitcoin space with an aim of making money or making fast money. Come here with an aim of learning. That is what we always encourage on our channel. Have a foundation. Your foundation is education. You will never go wrong with education because it makes it easier to invest in whatever you want to invest in. And also it makes it easier for you going forward in terms of what you want to grow in, what you are interested in, you know. But if you don't have knowledge and information, you're going to fly with this forex, guys. We're going to tell you, start investing with 15,000 or 10,000 rand. And I always tell you, every time they tell you you need a lot of money to start investing, you must run away. Because easy equities have made it possible for us to start investing with as little as 50 bucks. And I told you, you are going to get Bitcoin at easy equities. And there are a lot of platforms that sells Bitcoin in South Africa, registered South African companies who are in the crypto space that you can buy. But at a later stage, I will tell you guys the pros and cons né, of buying Bitcoin on these exchanges because one of the things the guys who created Bitcoin wanted is for you to have self 
own ship of this. That means you own it yourself and we can actually make transactions without, without having a third party. Like for an example, let's say you are selling something and you are in the US or you are in Nigeria. So now you have to go on a platform and then that platform is going to charge you some fees and then there must be another platform that is going to send this to us, you know. And obviously we're using a currency that is owned or printed by whatever central bank that country have, you know. But with Bitcoin, it's just me sending money to you and you sending money straight back to me. So it's basically power to the people. That is how I see it. Né? And I do encourage you to go out there, learn about it. Né? Learn about it. Don't go there just to make a quick buck. Né? Don't go there with that mindset of me saying, uh, Bitcoin was one rand in 2010. Now it's more than 500,000 rand. When I go with the mindset of trying to learn what is this, learn how does this work. Né? Moving on, on another side, 2017, 2018, 2021, China has been banning Bitcoin. So now, there's one thing that is very important that you guys need to understand about China. China has a